most important factor in streaming data or streaming, the time taken to make additions, or how quickly we can make additions. Based on that, we can define into three factors or three phases. One is the real time, near real time, and one is the offline. The streaming data or streaming applications are mainly come under the real time and the near real time areas. And uh, we talk about streaming application, then why we need streaming application? That's one of the questions that we arise. And uh, as for Forrester, who is the one of the leading market analysts in this area, as for them, streaming applications are actually important to identify perishable insights, and also it's helped for the continuous integration, and also it's helped for the embedded code of executions as well. And most importantly, it allows you to sense, think, and act on the real data in the real time. That is one of the important factors in streaming data. And uh, we talked about what is mean by why we need streaming application. Next question is how to build the streaming application. That's the next question. I think it's already covered in SUA session. I'm repeating for some other. <coughs> there are a few more folks are here. Uh, there are three types I can commonly name that. One is the code by yourself. If you are a programmer, if you are comfortable with some programming language, good, very good. Go and write your complete execution logic by the programming language that you like. And if it works, great, execute it, run it, live with that. The next option is using a stream processor. Using a stream processor, you will get the functionalities like uh, scalability, high availability, those functionalities. But anyway, you have to write the end-to-end -end, the logic, data flow logic, to find out those uh, patterns and those scenarios. And, uh, but if you are writing a, if you are having a stream processor which have the streaming SQL capabilities, then you will get the functionalities like scalability and high availability, those functionality. At the same time, you can write your data flow, the end-to-end -end flow, using the streaming SQL, which allow you to write very quickly and also edit them very quickly and deploy them and run in your environment for your purpose or need. <coughs> now, we'll go into the next session called patterns in streaming application or how to write what are the patterns are available in streaming applications. Uh, before moving into detail on that, the question is why we need patterns in streaming applications. Uh, first thing is patterns help you to understand what actually stream processing can do. The next question, the next uh, help is it can do is you can solve the common problems with the common solution which is already there using the patterns. The other one is you will understand where to use uh, which solution, or it's already predefined, it's easy to apply them. And uh, you also uh, learn more about how to apply the best practices. That's also one of the advantage that you will get when you are applying a pattern for a streaming world. Uh, in my talk, yeah, I'm going to use WSO stream processor. Uh, we have already covered why, why we are using, what are the importance in stream processor. If we quickly summarize, it's very lightweight and also cloud native. Uh, it provides streaming SQL capabilities and also provides the UI to write those streaming SQL uh, applications. And uh, you can achieve the high availability just with two nodes and you can scale into millions uh, uh, by us uh, distributed deployment functionalities. It also have the machine learning capabilities. Likewise, there are many advantages that you have when you are uh, using the stream processor to write your streaming applications. And these are the common patterns that we are going to discuss in, the, in my talk. And these are not uh, documented or uh, fixed set of patterns. These are, we identify based on our experience over the years by working with different customers in different projects. <coughs> And uh, in, in, in nutshell, uh, these are the areas. If you check the complete end-to-end -end event flow, we receive events from different sensors, we process them, and we send those as alerts to outside. And in different places, these patterns will be applied. In the initial level, we apply the streaming data pre-processing, and also there's another level, we'll apply the real-time predictions, KPI analytics, data store integration, likewise. In different phases of the analytics, these patterns will be applied. <coughs> And uh, before moving into more detail, we need a use case, right, to understand uh, more about these patterns. And here we are going to use a use case like online shopping application, where a user comes to an online store, he buys some products or some items, and after that, that order will process by the store. They'll also process the payments. At the same time, the order will be delivered to the user. This is an end-to-end flow. And uh, we are going to use few scenarios in this use case to explain our patterns in the streaming applications. 
The first one is streaming data pre-processing. In the streaming data pre-processing, there are a few phases. One thing is you consume events from different event sources, right? You have to get events from different event sources. The second one is you have to convert those received events into streams. That's the next one. And, the, and also you can do some filtering. There are some events which are noise. You can remove those events by doing filtering. Other than that, you can do some tra transformation by adding default values or change the data by adding some more transformations and change the event structure like, like you can do some more operations. And these are things that come under streaming data pre-processing. And uh, if I'm going to explain uh, those scenarios in query by writing queries, here we are going to use uh, Siddhi SQL, which is, uh, which is one of the streaming SQL, which used by WSODSP, and it's, uh, uh, it's come with a uh, Siddhi CEP engine, which already explained by Sue. And if you check the query here, you will identify where, how we are defining a stream. Defining a stream means what is the structure of the incoming event, right? We'll have one statement called define stream, and we define the name for the stream. After that, there are a few attributes we define. And uh, we have an attribute name, and also we have attribute type. Likewise, the stream gets defined in a simple way. And uh, in WS Stream Processor, we called a streaming application as a Siddhi app. Because of that, we are giving a name for that. That's what we called as App name, online shopping analytics. <clears throat> Here, it's, it's a type of annotation that we use to define the name. OK, now I mentioned initially consume event from different event sources, right? To consume event from different event sources, there are different receivers, or be called as sources are available in WS Stream Processor. They allow you to confirm from different transport like MQTT, HTTP, TCP, Kafka, likewise, various transports are available, and those transports. Uh, the transport adapters are also uh, customizable. If you have some uh, legacy transport that you want to connect with, then you can write your uh, own transport adapter based on your requirement. And the most importantly, you can receive those data in different event formats. Here you can see it's a JSON, XML, text, binary, like there are different event types are. You can receive events. Once you receive those events, uh, <clears throat> you will map into a stream. For example, here, we defined a stream called product purchase stream, and there are few attributes in it. And how we are specifying the source is simply adding an annotation called at source. And we are saying we are going to receive the events for this specific stream using HTTP, and the type of the event is JSON. Right? And, uh, <coughs> and if you simply write the query for that, and uh, we talked about the source, we talked about how to define the stream. Right? And uh, for example, let's say there are two types of uh, uh, mappings also you can do. Let's say you are receiving event from HTTP. You have to convert into a stream, right? That means event structure. That means from the request, you have to get some fields and map into the stream. That means you have to do a mapping. And that means we called as two type of mappings that we have. One is the default and custom mapping. And if you are using a default mapping, you have to use a predefined structure. And if you're using custom mapping, then it's a matter of using JSON path or XPath and specify what is the value on the request, and you can map into the stream. And uh, the next one is how to write the query. Uh, now we receive the event, and then that stream is called as product purchase stream. Now if you want to simply pass through that event to another stream, where we say it as from product stream, select all, insert into possible discount product stream. It's a simple SQL statement that most of you have already familiar with. Now, for example, let's say we want to do a filtering. We want to only send the events where the quantity is greater than five, and also the product ID is equal to XYZ. We want to send only those events to a uh, output stream, which is the possible discounted stream. At that time, we are doing a simple filtering. We are inside the square brackets we are mentioned here. OK, now let's say we want to do some transformation to the incoming event. That's what defined by this query. For example, from product stream, we are filtering the events, which is the product is XYZ, and also the quantity is 5. Then what we are doing is we are selecting few attributes in our incoming stream, which is we are getting the use ID, session ID, product ID, quantity. And also we are getting the price also from our incoming stream. 
but we are transforming that into another way. We are, but we are manipulating into 1.157, and we are saying it's a USD price. For example, it seems like the price is, is from uh, Euro, and we are converting into a USD price, that but we are manipulating or multiplying by 1.17. And at the same time, we are adding a now, another attribute called U currency, and we are specifying a constant for that. USD is the constant, and we are adding another attribute to the stream. And that specific values are sent to the stream called possible discount product stream. And uh, at the same time, you, we made some transformations, like we are manipulated, we added new attribute, like those things in the select statement. At the same time, you can call some other functions as well. For example, let's say you have already a function which convert to a euro into a USD. It's a matter of using that function, like convert to USD, pass it to the price, and that one gives you the, the actual USD price. And uh, these functions are, uh, there are predefined functions to manipulate different uh, data, like string and math. Uh, functions, but if you have some custom functions, yes, you can write your own functions and integrate with stream processor. And uh, we talked about data pre-processing. Now we'll come to our next pattern called data store integration. Uh, in today, in <coughs> today's session, Suho and Vidura covered about data store integration as a use case, similar as that, where we have uh, data in REST, and if, if, you, if you want to join with the data which are in REST, and make some decision. That means we have some history information. We want to join with that history information on the fly which is for the incoming event, and we want to make decisions on that. And uh, there are a few operations are allowed to do with that, like search, insert, delete, update, and insert, update. And also, it allows you to optimize those operations by using uh, primary keys or the indexing keys. Likewise, how we are working with databases. And also, it provides some rest endpoint to retrieve the data. Uh, from those data sources as well. And uh, if, you <clears throat> if you check this specific uh, query here, uh, the, the above query is how to define a stream. The next one is how to define a table. As simple as stream, we, we mention as define table, and we are giving a table uh, name, like user purchases, and say uh, what are the attributes in my table. And uh, here, we haven't defined any other properties for the table, then it's considered an in-memory table. That means but if, if, you are getting, if you are putting some events into this specific table, then those events will be in-memory. If you restart the server, the data will flush away. And uh, let's assume you want to do, you want to add a primary or index for those specific table. At that time, you can use the annotation, like add primary key or add index, and you can define those attributes for that similar to how we are doing with the database tables. And uh, you can define, and it will increase the performance when we are dealing with the tables. And uh, now, the common case is uh, it's not an in-memory table. You might have some data which is there already in your environment. Like if it's a bank, you might have some customer's data. Or if there are some other use cases, you might have some more data. And what you have to do is, when you are receiving the event, and you are doing some manipulations on the fly, but at the same time, you have to join with the data, which is already there, which is the history information. You have to join with that and make some decision, right? At that time, we, we also support to do that using uh, external uh, data table or external table mirroring concept. Uh, at the moment, we are supporting any RDBMS type. Most of the common RDBM, RDBMS types are supported. And also, MongoDB is one of, uh, another one supported by. Uh, the event table structure uh, provided by the stream processor, and also HBase, Cassandra, Solar, as it goes. Likewise, there are many types of external event stores are also supported, can be mirrored using the event table construct, which is there in the uh, stream processor. And uh, <clears throat> for that, what you have to do is you have to simply specify another annotation called at store and defining the type. What is the type there? If it's RDBMS table, you have to specify as type RDBMS. But if its uh, type is different, like HBS or Cassandra like that, you can specify them as well. But if you have some other event store which is not by default supported by us, yes, you can write an extension for that and connect with them stream process as well. And uh, <clears throat> this is the uh, final query that we can see here, where we have defined the stream, uh, which is called as shopping checkout stream. 
and there are some attributes there. And we have a table defined here, which is backed by a RDBMS event store. And that table is mentioned as user table. And what, you have, what here we are doing is, from shopping checkout string, we are selecting the user ID, session ID, and the amount, and we are inserting into a table called user table. This is a simple insertion that we are performing here. Likewise, you can do any deletions, or you can join with different tables and make some updates into a, uh, which, uh, in the data which is already there, or you can make some uh, uh, deletion based on some condition that you have. Those operations are also possible. The next uh, pattern that we are going to discuss is streaming data summarization. Um, Sua has covered some part of this in this session. Uh, where the streaming data summarization, there are two levels. One is the aggregation over time, but aggregation over time can be divided in two levels. One is the uh, short time, but is the long time. Based on that, there are two types of summarization we can do. And uh, the aggregation, there are a few types of aggregations are supported, like some count, min, max, average, standard deviation. Likewise, those commonly used aggregations are supported. And, uh, if you take the query, we are aggregation over so short time. For example, short time means it's a mi second, millisecond, or minute, or it can be a few hours, right? And uh, what we are doing is, if you want to do a summarization for a short time duration, then we use a concept called window. Window is a concept where it allows you to group the events, group the incoming events. For example, let's say you are receiving events continuously, and you want to do aggregation, right? To do aggregation, you need a group of event. To do, then that group of event is we consider as window. We said as window, and uh, there are a few type of windows are available where you group the events based on the length, based on number of events, and also you can group the events based on time. That means group the last one minute data likewise. But at the same time, in, there's another flavor of it where it's a sliding and also batch. Sliding means it's tumbling window. Uh, that means if an event come to a window, then definitely that event will stay for, let's say the event window time is one minute, and uh, there's an event come to a window, then that specific event will be stay in the window for, for that one minute period. But if it's a batch window, and uh, the batch starts based on the first event's arrival, or based on, uh, if it's a one minute window, it can start at 4.1, 4.2, likewise, it, it started at 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, like that, right? Then after one minute, that complete event will be, which are in the in window, will be flushed away. Then the new window start from the beginning. Likewise, there are two flavors, like sliding and the batch. And uh, uh, time and the length is one type of that. Likewise, there are various type of windows, like unique windows. There are various type of windows in that. In, in this query, you can see we are, we are getting the events from product purchase stream. And we are sending, we are having a window, which is a time window, which is a one minute time window. And what we are doing is, we are calculating the sum. We are doing an aggregation for the sum. And we are saying as a total quantity. We are mentioning as a total quantity. <coughs> and uh, we are grouped by the specific uh, uh, case for the product ID. That means for each and every product ID, we are calculating the sum for last one minute. That is what we mean by this query. It's simple as you're understanding the, how you're writing the SQL in, in, uh, in, in your normal uh, working life with tables. And this is how we are doing aggregation for uh, over short time period and how we are dealing with the windows. And let's assume that you want to do aggregation for the longer time, which is, uh, <clears throat> which is already covered in source session as well, where we called as incremental aggregation, which is one of our unique feature in WS3 stream processor where it allowed to do aggregation over the longer time periods. For example, you can start from second. You can do for minute, hour, day. Like here, you can go up to here. And what we, have, we are doing is we initially calculate the uh, aggregation for the second. Then we uh, calculate for each and every second. From That means 60 seconds means one minute. right? Then we say it's a one minute aggregation. Then we calculate for 60 minutes. That 60 minutes means one hour. Likewise. We are doing the incremental aggregation over the time. And, and with the help of that, with the use of uh, <clears throat> the database approach, they are called as uh, uh, 
we are, we are dealing with the database, and also we are dealing with the incoming events, which, is a, which we call as Lambda architecture. And from that, we are doing a, a long time aggregation, which we call as incremental aggregation. And uh, if you check the query, it will be a bit more easy to understand. For example, how, likewise, how we are defining a stream, we are defining aggregation. Here you can see we define aggregation when we are giving a name for the aggregation. And uh, what we are doing is, what we define by this aggregation is, from product page stream, we are selecting the product, and also we are doing a sum aggregation where we are manipulating the, multiplying the price and the quantity, and we are saying as a total amount. And also there is another aggregation query where we are uh, identifying the sum of the quantity, which we are defining as number of items, and we are grouped by, by product ID. That means for each and every product ID, we are calculating those aggregations uh, in this specific query. And what we are doing is we are aggregating from each and every seconds to year. That means we are finding out the aggregation from year, second to year. For second to year means second minute, hour, day, likewise, it goes until here. Okay. The most important, uh, <coughs> uh, important thing that you have to understand here is if you are Doing aggregation from second to year means you have aggregated summary data for each and every second and for each and every minute, each and every hour, likewise until year. That means since you de have data for each and every this time uh, frame, then it will also help you to retrieve or to, to visualize those data or retrieve those data very quickly if you have a use case. And that's what we are going to cover. A similar use case is going to cover in next scenario is one what we call as interactive data search. Interactive data search means, uh, in my previous session, uh, previous patterns, I covered about data store integration, other one is the aggregation, right? Then the data store integration, what we have done was, we are doing some manipulation, we store the summary data into a database, and again, again we can also have in the in-memory. Uh, other one is, in the aggregation, we are doing some aggregation over the long time period, and we are storing those information as well. Now we store those information. Then the question is how to retrieve those data, how to retrieve those summarized data that we store. For that, we have a functionality called interactive data search, where we provide uh, <coughs> uh, REST endpoint and also Java APIs, which allow you to get those summarized data in a very simple uh, SQL-like query. And uh, these are some query that you can see here, where we said as from purchase aggregation, the aggregation which is we already created in my earliest case, from purchase aggregation, we are saying as for product ID SYZ, within the time frame, that means from May to June, we are saying consider the day aggregation and give me the values like product ID, total amount, number of items. In this query, what we are doing is we are getting the data of from 1st of May to 1st of June, and we are finding out the aggregation for each and every day of the product ID SYZ, right? It's, sim it's a somewhat a, uh, SQL query that you can pass to the uh, server and get the output. Either you can use a REST call or you can use a um, CD, uh, and if you are writing a CD query, you can write it as CD query itself and get the summarized data and do some processing as well. And, uh, Dashboards also using these functionalities. If you are want to retrieve those aggregation or data that you stored using the aggregation or data stores, you, you can simply use the dashboards functionalities, which is available in WS Stream Processor. It helps you to uh, retrieve those functionalities and uh, um, and and um, to to get, to visualize them into the dashboard. There are different factors. One is you can use the uh, our data search API, and also it allows you to deal with the directly RDBMS and get the data. Uh, likewise, there are various types of options are available to retrieve and see those information in a dashboard. <coughs> the fifth one is the KPI analysis and the alerts. And uh, here what we are doing is, we already talked about different filtering capabilities. We find out different data aggregations. Uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, data source integration. We are doing uh, complex event processing using the incoming data, right? The next question is, we decide something. Now we have to notify to the external user. For that, we are using our alert capability. And uh, to send alerts, we are using a functionality called sync. In the sync, it's similar to the source, where we are defining an annotation like sync, 
and we'll say different type of sync, like email, or there are various type of things are available, like email, HTTP, TCP likewise, how you want to notify your uh, decision to the outside. And here, what we're having a simple email sync, it's as same as how we defined the source in our previous slide. We are, what we are doing is, we are getting the events from the shopping cart payment stream, and we are checking whether the, the payment is successful or not. If it's successful, we are sending all the data to the successful payment stream. And if a permit is successful, we are sending an email for the user saying the order is purchased successfully. The next one is event correlation and trend analytics. Um, the, the pattern is one of the event correlation trend analysis is common in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, it's, 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 uh, we, we, we see it in our day-to-day -day life all the time. For example, the, the three of the speakers who have demonstrated today were specs from different age groups. And, uh, and uh, that's one of the patterns you can identify, right? Likewise, uh, the identifying pattern varies in two levels, where you check the events continuously over the time and identify patterns. Other one is um, you, you check the event continuously, but those events not need to be uh, one after another. That means it's, it's a type of, I can explain from the query, one is the there are two types of things. One is the pattern, where we check whether something followed by another, which we called as followed by pattern. And you can check whether something not occurred after another. That is one we called non-occurrences. The other one is the identified trends. For example, if you take a stock market, if the stock of the price increases over the time continuously, it's a type of a trend you have to identify. And uh, both of them are supported by streaming SQL capabilities. Here, if you check the query, we are <clears throat> getting a stream called shopping cart, shopping payment stream. The shopping payment stream, what we are doing is, uh, once after shopping payment stream, and uh, <clears throat> we check, there are two streams. One is the shopping cart checkout stream and shopping cart payment stream. And once we are doing the shopping cart checkout, if there is no payments for that specific session within the 15 minutes, that means that specific shopping cart payment is a delayed payment. Right? That's what we identified here. If you check here, for each and every shopping cart event, we are saying after that, we are checking whether there is a shopping cart payment for specific session ID within 15 minutes. And if there is no shopping cart payment, then we say, say it as payment delayed stream. And the sequence also something like that, where over the time period, let's say over the one hour over the time period, if the purchase are reduces over the time, then it's a type of trend we are trying to identify. That's what defined in this specific query. <clears throat> Other one is the real-time uh, predictions. The real-time prediction, there are two approaches. One is using the machine learning model. Other one is the online learning model. The machine learning model, what we are doing is, you are building your uh, machine learning uh, models. After that, you are using some data, and you are training that specific data sorry, train that specific model, then you're using that specific model and integrate with the stream processor, and you, you uh, use that for the prediction. That is the one approach. You can use PMM models, and uh, you, can, you can use the models that you build with Spark ML Lib, likewise, you can use models for that. The other option is online uh, learning model, where you learn uh, on the fly with the incoming data. At the same time, you will predict based on the data that you learned. And uh, if you take the machine learning model, what you can do is you can build your model and train it, and you can integrate that with the stream processor. And it's a matter of simply sending the data to the stream, and you can predict over the time. Other one is the continuous learning model, where from the shopping cart checkout stream, you are sending those data into a, a online, uh, tr um, online continuous learning model, which is there. It will learn the specific uh, based on the incoming data. And what you can do is, at the same time, there's a model which allows you to do a prediction from the data that you learned already. Uh, now I have covered the patterns which I plan to cover, like uh, pre-processing the data and uh, data store integration. Another one is the uh, aggregation over the time and the patterns and the streaming SQL 
and uh, uh, predictions over the time. Those things are actually covered over the time. And uh, next question is, OK, now I have built streaming applications or streaming application pattern. How to manage them? And uh, there are two ways. One is that if it's a business user, you can use our uh, business template manager, which allow you to manage those patterns. That is the one option. And uh, if it's a developer, what you can use is you can use our source view editor or our drag and drop editor, and you can build those uh, specific uh, streaming applications. And uh, if you want to deploy those streaming applications that you already built, and uh, there are two deployment patterns are available. One is the high availability deployment pattern, uh, which is already covered by SUO, where we can have only just two nodes, and you can uh, achieve the high availability capability, and it can process 100K events per second. Um, the other option is you can use a distributed deployment pattern, where you can, with the help of Kafka, uh, you can distribute your whole deployment and uh, by using simple uh, CD SQL queries, and you can uh, scale your whole deployment altogether. The next question, <coughs> next one is, yes, we build the patterns, we manage those patterns, uh, we uh, deploy those patterns. Now, how to monitor that pattern? To monitor those pat streaming applications, <coughs> uh, we have a, something called status dashboard, which allow you to provide uh, information or summarization or status view about the throughput latency. And also, it also provides uh, information about the node level information or app level information and the query level information. Okay. To summarize what we have covered today is I covered what stream processing can do, how to write streaming SQL in the WS stream processor, and what are the functionalities are there in the WS stream processor to write those streaming patterns. And, uh, for, and also, uh, when you are writing uh, patterns with the WS stream processor, what are the benefits that you get, and why patterns will help you to write streaming application, and what are the advantages that you get using stream processor when writing patterns with streaming apps. Those are the areas I covered in the session. I think I'm time's up already. And thank you.